this setup guide I'm going to take you through all of the essentials to help you get up and running emulating PS1 games with DuckStation. DuckStation is available via their homepage or the Emulator Project's GitHub page. I prefer to download from the GitHub Project page to ensure I am obtaining the latest release. Visit the link on screen, which is also in the description, and download the version you require. For the Windows PC version, I suggest downloading DuckStation Windows X64 release.zip, as that's what I'm going to be using in this guide. Once you've downloaded the DuckStation file, you'll just need to unzip the contents in a place you want to save the emulator. So BIOS files. DuckStation requires a BIOS ROM file in order to play games. You'll need to download a PS1 BIOS file. On screen are some examples of PS1 BIOS files that can be used with DuckStation. To find these, simply search for them on Google, or alternatively, archive.org is a great place to visit for these kind of files. Once you have a BIOS file, create a BIOS folder where you wish to store these files, and then copy them into that folder. You now need to configure DuckStation to find these files, so boot up DuckStation, then go to Settings, BIOS, and then click the Browse button in the BIOS directory section. Then navigate to where your BIOS files are saved. Then click Select Folder to confirm your BIOS folder location. I recommend leaving the BIOS selections all set to Auto Detect unless you have a specific need to specify a BIOS file. Now on to controller setup. It is very straightforward to set up controllers in DuckStation. Simply go to Settings, then Controllers in the menu, and you'll open the Controller Settings window. Here you have the Global Settings section, which allows you to enable SDL, X input, and D input enabled controllers, as well as mouse simulation and multi tap compatibility, which caters for up to eight controllers. Most controllers connected to your system will be auto configured. To check your connected controller configuration, select Controller Port 1, and then choose the PlayStation controller you wish to map. For example, a digital controller or an analog controller. Next, click the Automatic Mapping button. Select your connected controller, which should appear in the list, and then DuckStation should auto assign your connected controller buttons to that of the selected PlayStation controller. To remap any controls, click on the button you wish to remap in the DuckStation controller window, then press the button on your controller you wish to assign it to. Hotkeys can also be assigned to emulator functions, such as emulator fast forward controls, as well as safe state loading and saving. Moving on to more DuckStation settings. DuckStation is jam packed with settings that not only improve things such as visuals, but also features such as cheats, retro achievements, and memory card management. First of all, we'll look at video settings. Here are some tips if you want to improve the resolution and texture filtering effects. First of all, we'll go to the display section. This section allows you to change the display functions of DuckStation, such as selecting the graphics renderer and applying VSync. Here are some recommended settings if you have a GPU present in your system. Set the render to either Vulkan or Direct3D 11 or 12, check which works best with your system, enable VSync, and just leave everything else as default for now. Moving on to the Enhancements section. Here you can apply visual enhancements such as increasing the resolution scale, applying texture filtering, and a range of other enhancement options. My recommended settings are as follows. Set the internal resolution scale to 5x for 1080p screens, or 9x for 4K screens. Set texture filtering to XBR if you have a reasonably powerful system, otherwise just select nearest neighbor. And finally, in PGXP, enable geometry correction. In the cheats section, DuckStation has a built-in system that offers a range of cheats for games automatically. Simply boot a game, then access the cheats menu via tools and cheats. You can then activate cheats as required. And finally, achievements. DuckStation utilizes the Retro Achievement service and is really easy to set up. First of all, make sure you sign up to a Retro Achievements account if you haven't one already. So go to Settings and Achievements, and then tick the Enable Achievements box, and then click the Login button under the Account section and enter your login details. Once you're logged in, you'll then be able to earn Retro Achievements with DuckStation. To add your collection of PS1 games to DuckStation, go to Settings, Game List, select the plus icon, and then select the folder where your PS1 games are stored. If you are prompted to search directories recursively, then click Yes, ensuring DuckStation will then search any subdirectories for game files too. You will now see your games appear in the main DuckStation window. And what about launching games? Because really that's what this whole thing's about, isn't it? Playing PlayStation games. So to launch a game, simply double click a game in your games list, DuckStation will then proceed to launch the game, and you're ready to play. 
So that's it. Duck Station is a really simple emulator and a pleasure to use and is also pretty much the best PS1 emulator around these days. So have fun playing lots of PS1 classics and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.